point I'm trying to make here is, um, the point I'm trying to make here is, when you really start dealing with the spirit world, you're going to find out it's going to be the complete opposite because we have been given religion, and religion is not spirit. No matter how much it makes you feel good, it's not spirit. And the only feeling good is you are spiritual beings, and you need something to feel good, so therefore only what you're programmed to, programmed by is why you feel the way you do. But religion is only inspiration. You see what I'm saying? So I knew that the brother, when he was talking that, he was religious. And religious say that it's all about your behavior. And I'm trying to tell you, I've been communicating with these spirits day and night, and not once did they ever say, Bobby, you need to stop cursing. <laughs> or Bobby, you need to not... Take this here. They require this. <laughs> you know, I, I one time, I, I, they require this. So I had all this acid indigestion. I couldn't get rid of it for, for one day. And I'm like, what the devil going on? They were like, you know what you got to do? So I had to go get some medicine. <laughs> as simple as that. Now, I'll go into the science on this type thing here and all. Because you're going to have to break. So we're talking spirit. And sometimes you're going to have to break what you know as religious and even though what you might think is detrimental to your health, there could be some spirits behind some things. So there's three sisters, and I talk about Otita, T.H. and Shayola. And they show up, and they heal whatever. And I can get them to heal whatever, but they be like, Mom, get the shit. <laughs> so now they're like, no, we want some cognac. <laughs> so, 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 you know, now here's shit, I got it working. And I'm a mate, she's going to come in with some expensive taste and start giving these damn spirits some high-end shit. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Messing up my flow. So now all of a sudden now they want cognac. Or they wanted some uh uh that um Don Quavo. Uh what's that? Quavo gold. They don't want the red tequila, they want the Quavo gold. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, I had them going on shit when I get up the street. I live in the hood. <laughs> now you done raised the bar. <laughs> it's becoming quite expensive. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say here is. We have all been programmed to think, to think what we think is spiritual is based on a person's behavior before you, and that's not spiritual. I went to college for eight years. I went for four years, and then I went for another eight years just to have a place to stay. Three hots in a cot. Take 15 hours. I think it's 12 hours. Which one, 12, to get that grant? Well, I take about 12, 12 hours to get the grant. No more. Just to get the lunchroom and the bed so I can stay on the campus. And I used to use that to move. I said, I, I, to move to another city. I said, dang, I, I need to go to Atlanta. I said, dang, I ain't got no money, whatever. I'll get back in school. But I forgot what I was getting ready to say. But anyway, <laughs> I went four years in this black college down there in South Carolina, and they had these black speakers that would come up, and they would inspire us for four years. And they knew the art of saying nothing well. That's ceremony. So as soon as you see somebody come on orthodox and curse before you, you have been trained to reject that. Now, what is going on is this. Let's explain a couple of things. Y'all all right? Yeah. Explain a couple of things. Um, what is going on is this. You have, um, you have, uh, you have um, uh, the subconscious mind. You ever had some people, and some of you might know this, because this probably happened in the last couple of years. They've been going all this black conscious stuff. They've been going all this Afrocentric stuff. And they know that all this, the origin of their religion started in Africa, started in Kemet. And after they learned all of that, they went back up in the church. Singing on the choir. And you, you baffle. You go, wait a minute. How can you learn that the origin, not, you know, that, that, that one is an offshoot of the other and one is model, and you're going to go back to the falsehood. That is because you must understand the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind creates, creates what you put. It's programmed with what you, what uh, initial information is put into it. The original information, the, the initial programming. You see, in its inception. And it, takes that programming and believes it to be real. And it works on that initial state of what was programmed into it to bring you what you want. So it gives you reality for, from the very first thing that you program it with. And that, that you program it with could be wrong information. But it only deals with the reality in which it is programmed in, so therefore it, it runs off of the wrong information like it's reality. And when you put the right information in it, it would reject the right information until you get that initial programming out. So what has happened here is some of the people who have gone and learned all this stuff did not somehow internalize it and destroy the initial programming. And so it only became data, data, data. And it never seeped through to conquer the initial wrong programming. So after a while, after a couple of years, after certain lecture circuits shut down and they don't see the people no more, 
you know, doing lectures or new information coming out, they're going back to the church. And you baffled because you don't know what the hell happened. And, 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 and because you were taught something as a child, doesn't necessarily make it true. The first thing people say, well, why are you going to tell me that? My mom and my daddy learned this. My mom and my daddy taught me this. You know what I'm saying? So you say, how can I, how can I, um, how can I get rid of this here? And I've been knowing it all my life. You understand how that goes? It doesn't necessarily make it right. You get where I'm coming from? So you, that's, that's called the initial breeding. And you have to somehow, your cup is running over with ignorance. So you have to dump that out to get the fresh information. And so it's a, a, a series of programs. And you must do this now with the very essence of everything that you think is right and good. You see what I'm saying? So because you got a group of slangs that somehow um, your parents told you this, oh, that's bad. And you're still functioning on this now 40 plus, 50 plus. It's because of initial programming. Now over here, I'll give you an example. Over here, we can say the word bloody and it won't mean anything. But if you go to Britain and say the word bloody, you just as well said, you no good bastard. You understand where I'm coming from? So what is reality? It's only what you are programmed to say. So if you, it's the same thing when, if you would go to the bush in Africa and you say, you're no good bitch, you bastard. <laughs> to the twa people, they might laugh at you because they don't understand. They don't grasp the concept of that being offensive. So it's only relative to what you were initially programmed. And that's why we said that the only one that you will take offense to is damn. And that's the, that, you, that you don't take offense. You can say it in the pulpit. Preacher can say, don't give a damn. And they go, well, go ahead, old preacher. And it is the only one. That is the curse word based on when you want to say the word curse as far as damning someone. And then you have to use it in a certain function for it to be a curse. So it's by definition of the word, except when you say curse word or profane, well, we want to deal with the profane. <laughs> I'm just trying to say here is we have to get out of the programming of what we would have as religion. So I could come here and give you this straight lace simulation of being spiritual and take all your money and get caught in the bed screwing your damn daughters and incest and all kind of crazy stuff, but you bought it. You see what I'm saying? I want to preface that. I'm not talking about me screwing your daughters. I don't want to get it that, that, that Bobby went up to Philadelphia and said he wanted to screw your daughters. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. I'm just trying to say we get these shysters year after year after year been getting over on you since before slavery and all because they came and said something in the package in which you were programmed to believe that they were spiritual. You see what I'm saying? And the prostitute might have the key to your salvation and you walk over her because you are programmed to, to think the spirit has something to do with behavior and behavior never existed. Everybody in this room, you've never existed. So you, I said, I was going to give you the concept on how you can start loving yourself. You start loving yourself by not identifying yourself with the physical body that you think you are. You are not your physical body. And I know what I'm talking about. In 2002, on um, October the 16th, I was sitting in the chair and I went to no self. That's the spiritual level where you go and you neutralize, um, you neutralize your spiritual, your spiritual self. So Bobby Hammett no longer existed. I felt alone for a couple of minutes. But then I really realized how stupid it was. Because my soul was outside and my soul was identifying with, it, with, with its original self, and my physical body was just a series of illusions that never existed. So now if you can get to the point where you can devalue your physical self and every little thing that you hold dear in your life, including your family and everything, and understand that you are completely cosmic, you see what I'm saying? Then you can neutralize your ego enough that you don't have to be over here playing hating on somebody because they bought a brand new fur coat. It's just a series of events that never existed. We never existed. This is the ultimate reality that we got to say over and over because at this particular time, we have been judged by what is called the apocalypse of the heart. The apocalypse of the heart chakra and the heart and all. And that's what we're dealing with at this particular time. So, at, so, it's, so and, and when you do this, we can get past what person comes and behaves a certain way. You see what I'm saying? So there was a method to the madness why as when I became more and more spiritual, I became more and more foul mouth. So what the devil is going on? And that's because of the training was being passed off. I was actually neutralizing, but the spirit was saying that you're going to need this to teach the people because most of the people that you think are spiritual are not spiritual. They are only, they've only convinced themselves that they're spiritual, but they are more religious. And that's a series of inspirational ceremony. And obviously it ain't working well for them because it's your sons and daughters, especially your sons that's locked up in prison. It's, it's, it's your community that's run by every other race but you and giving you goods and services. But yet we got a church on every damn corner. You see what I'm saying? A church on every corner. And out of all the spirits that have showed up over the course of years, at first it was the, the, the generic names of the original ones that we know, and then the new names, I never heard of Jesus show up. 
Because it's a composite figure that never existed. You see what I'm saying? I've heard from Osiris. I've heard from Horus. Or hey, Ru, I've heard from all types of mystical characters in the past. Never heard of Jesus. <laughs> but then again, they understand that Lucifer simply means the pineal gland. You see what I'm saying? Son of the morning, it means the pineal gland. When you get into the mythological aspect of it and not into the political aspect of it, of, of, of what they gave to the people. We'll go into some questions and answers and stuff. But I'm saying we got to turn all this particular stuff around. Mostly everything when you see, if you, even in the book of the dead or the book of coming forth that day, when you go to the di different venues where the soul travels at the hours of the night, as you get deeper into the region of the highest level of spirits, monsters show up, demons show up. Well, wait a minute, hold on now, hold on. We are taught that all oh, this is evil, but as you go on, if you get the venue S and stuff, and more and more you get the hours of the night, then the monsters start showing up. Because that's the most spiritual shit. You see what I'm saying? And put out the movie, out of, out of cartoon gargoyles, come on, every night at 11 o'clock. Got more science in it than, 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 than most things that you even read on the Disney Channel, gargoyles, every night on, at, at 11 o'clock, 11.30. They drop all the science. And who are the monsters? You see, I just want to put these things out here. We're going to go right ahead. But I'm just trying to say here, we got to deprogram ourselves and we got to quit being scared. Now, I know you all are scared as hell for somebody to come up you uh, unorthodox and stuff like that, but I'm trying to tell you this here. It was simple. 11 years ago, I decided to do a de detailed study into the devil. And that's all you had to do, is to do a detailed study into the devil, and you find out in actuality that the one that the evil that you think don't exist. And that the devil is one of the highest levels of spirituality. Double, doppelganger, your true self. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm saying this and all because I'm an authority on the damn subject. Anybody can challenge me on this shit. You see what I'm saying? But my point is also, I done went through every satanic ritual there was, and I was sitting there. And you don't think for once. Look, they got, let me show you something here. Y'all all right? Y'all yeah. all right? Sometimes the spirit work things. Uh, let me show you something right here, but I got to say things before I forget it. Let me show you something right here. I'm going to pull the libations right now, but I got to, I got to get this out, because after I pull the libation, I might forget it. Because once the libation comes, the, then it's on then. You see what I'm saying? It's on then. You see? It's on. But I want to show you something right here. Y'all all right? Let me see. I got so much junk. You know, and I'm, I'm you know, and, and, and when you neutralize things, you don't have to worry. Like, like the sister, like, like my queen, I came out, I came out the record store. She said, there's a guy over there trying to buy me a drink. I'm like, well, damn. Why you let a nigga buy you a drink? But see, I done neutralized the point that I'm supposed to, who said I'm supposed to get upset? You know what I'm saying? Who said I'm supposed to get upset? It's when I'm upset if you <laughs> looking that toe up that somebody don't want to buy you no drink. <laughs> Now, I ain't stupid. This woman is an actual beauty queen. She used to dress down and wear, dress down and wear big clothes and stuff because she didn't want niggas hitting on her. She's an actual beauty queen. Clothes on, clothes off. So when, so, so when she came out, I said, well, hell, you let you let that nigga buy you a drink. Or buy us one. But I'm thinking on a whole other level and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, he wanted to buy you a drink. And then he, she said, well, you know, when my husband is next, he was like, I don't care. I'll buy you one anyway. I'm like, damn. He might have broke me off a drink. Just depends on your mentality and how you get upset by certain things or you program certain things. So I, so I love it when they look at her. That's what, what you think a man go with a woman for in the first place. You see what I'm saying? To show her all she's damn on peace. You see what I'm saying? So I be looking at you and you looking at look. Yeah, come on, look. You see, other people get offended. So it just depends on where you where, where 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 you are at the time. But I want to show you this. I want to show you this. If I can find it, if God, if I can find it, I got so much stuff. But I want to show you this. It's a picture. To show you what we're dealing with with these Nazi, Nazi, Nazi doctors, you know, go get the movie Empire Strikes Back. Excellent movie, second installment of the original Star Wars, when the guy said, when, when, when Obi-Wan Kenobi told Luke Skywalker, I want you to go meet Yoda, the, Yoda, the Jedi Master. And, and Yoda was a little old runt, living in a shithole, eating stew. And he treated him with a heavy hand. And then he said, I can't teach him. He realized Yoda ended up being the Jedi Master. And that's the concept here that you're going to have to get past. That. The same East Indian concept where the guy searched for God for 100 years and couldn't find him. He searched for him another 100 years, couldn't find him. He searched for him another 100 years, couldn't find him. And he said, I don't think I'm going to be able to find God. But he only remembered on that road of searching for him, there was one prostitute on the side of the road. So when he started the journey this time, he went to the prostitute and said, can you tell me where God is? She said, I am God. She said, but you're a prostitute. Say, look, take it or leave it. That's what I am. <laughs> but you can miss your enlightenment because you have a series uh, prejudgments and and judgments and you predispose to something that is religious and ceremonial and is not spirit at all. It's gonna come. That's why the Africa why you think the African 
And around the world, they got a trickster figure. In all mythology, they got a trickster figure. Tahuti is a trickster figure in Egypt. You see what I'm saying? Because also, Tahuti is also Hermes, which is also Mercury. So also, did he say, who you said was Mercury? Um, set. Tahuti is also Mercury, because guess what? If you look at the origin of the pre-dynastic set, part of his attributes went to Osiris, part of his attributes went to Anubis, and part of his attributes went to Tahuti. That's why you'll see Tahuti with a dog head in some mythology. You get the word Hermenubis. Which is Tahuti, you see, so, so it's a trickster figure. You see, so there's tricksters all over, and, that, and those are the gatekeepers. Those are the gatekeepers. Uh, another thing, too, here's another thing about the gatekeeper. Now, I made a thing, now I'm a, I have to preface this. So I just want to preface that. But we're dealing with the heart chakra. We're dealing with the heart chakra. And that's when the spirit said, came and said, Look, you're going to do it with this heart chakra, you cannot judge nobody because they're gay. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You know, women never had a problem with that. They got all kind of good gay friends. I don't know what you know. And the only reason why you're doing this is because of ego. Because somehow you think it's a threat to your, your maleness and it ain't got nothing to do with anything. And I'm heterosexual, but the spirit said, no, I'm going to show you. So when I announced that stuff, and it's interesting, I was in Cleveland. And a brother showed up who was gay. And he had all his shirt on about the gatekeeper, which is all in Maladoma Somay's books, talk about the gay people are the gatekeepers. And he, he showed up and was the gatekeeper. And I said, and he was, he was the most spiritual thing there. And it reminds me of the, the, the uh, when they stepped to stoke the Carmichael at the time, when he first did Black Power, and the gay white community stepped to him, and they said, um, we want you to uh, uh, help us with, with our thing because we got all this gay bashing. He was like, I can't do that. That ain't our culture. He said, what? They said, it's not our culture. They said, explain. He said, look, we knew in the, in, in, in the civil rights movement that your boy from France, um, that lived in France, um, James Baldwin was gay. But something in black people's nature we did not vilify this brother because we knew that this brother was paramount to our struggle. Now, that means that the legacy, tell you that the legacy of the civil rights movement, the whole thing, not the Jewish influence, but the people that Martin Luther King and, and all those other people are, uh, Ralph Abernathy, Martin Luther King, and all them people, they had to be trained by a man, Bayard Reston, who had gone down into Mississippi and Alabama in the 1940s when they was lynching people still, and he had to train them how to do a protest without getting killed. So this man was so bad of a warrior, so they had to bring him on just to train Martin Luther King and them how not to get killed, because he had gone down up in there raising hell in the 40s when no other black people was doing it. And he is the archetype, architect behind the whole march on Washington, D.C. You see what I'm saying? So in so many words, I said, well, no, wait, no, why would they put this type of person in our, in our struggle? You see what I'm saying? In our, in our struggle. It is to teach you in actuality that we're dealing with the spirit realms. We're not dealing with religions. To tell you that you're supposed to castigate a person. You see what I'm saying? Because of whatever, and I say that for one reason, because I thought about it. What a nigga do in the dark is so personal. It's not as if, this, how is this challenging me? Oh, he can't get into heaven. What, where is this damn heaven that everybody's trying to get to that we ain't seen the damn access yet? 